Vibrato is a topic that we all should look into. Ultimately, there are no rules of doing vibrato. So I think we use vibrato typically as a means of expression to sound as vocal as we possibly can. Never just think of it as something that you switch on and it's, you know, like putting on the, the heating and making a nice comfortable sound. Hi, I'm Chelsea Tanner, head of the flute platform at Tonebase. Creating a beautiful singing vibrato is something we all want to achieve as flutists. There are so many different ways to use vibrato when crafting a phrase. And if you haven't done this intentionally before, it may be hard to know where to start. You're going to hear from four renowned flutists in this video. They're gonna give you their insights on vibrato, how you can work on vibrato, and how to use it effectively in your music. They are Marianne Gadigian, Sarah Shin, Mark Sparks, and Lorna McGee. All of these clips are part of longer, more in-depth courses that can be found on the Tonebase Flute Premium platform. Enjoy. If someone wanted to start controlling their vibrato, maybe the width or the speed like you were talking about, how would you recommend going about that? Mm -hmm. First, I think we should sort of consider what our vibrato shape might look like, ideally. Do we think a spiky vibrato that has jagged edges is ideal? Maybe sometimes, maybe in certain music where we want it to sound punchy. Do we think slow and wide, slow and wide vibrato? Again, maybe in certain circumstances. Typically, I think we want a pretty equitable top and bottom part of the wave. Mm -hmm. And where we choose to peak, I think, is a point of choice. So we can make the top of the vibrato, the sharpest point of the vibrato, higher than exactly in tune, or we can make the top of the vibrato, the sharpest vibrato, in tune. I think I do a little bit of both but I tend toward enjoying it going up to pitch more and especially releasing for the flat part. I think mm -hmm. the, the flat part is where we get our cantabile, actually. That's where we get the, the buoyancy in the vibrato is from the release. So once we sort of identify in our mind's eye what we're after in our air, because I think the visual is super helpful, then we can start practicing with a metronome mm -hmm. if we want to start controlling our vibrato. I'll give you an exercise on how you can incorporate the vibrato into the music that you're working on. For example, the piece that I'll be discussing today is Beethoven's Flute Sonata in B-flat major, the third movement specifically. When you're first starting vibrato, when you want to incorporate vibrato into music, I suggest to start with something slower rather than something fast. Because incorporating vibrato into music is a lot easier when you have slower lines, longer notes, where you can really find the type of vibrato in your sound. For example, I'm going to use the first two measures, which is a subphrase of a longer phrase in this Beethoven Sonata third movement. When you're working on a piece, I suggest writing down the notes that you want to use vibrato within the phrases. Some tips on using vibrato. I like to use vibrato on the beginning of the phrase, the peak of the phrase, and sometimes at the end. Another really great use of vibrato is when you really want to bring out a tension point in a harmonic part of the piece, like a leading tone, really sitting on that seventh before it resolves to the tonic. So here in this example, I'm going to start without vibrato, because it is very piano and soft, and then add vibrato in the next bar where I find the peak of the subphrase and the very last note. In this exercise, I call it the fermata exercise. What you do is you add a fermata on the note that you want to add the vibrato in. So in this case, on the second bar, I want to vibrato the first note. I'm gonna add a fermata on it. When I play this in the exercise, I play through the entire phrase first without vibrato so I can find my tone dynamic, the foundation of it before I add it in for the musical phrase. So I'll show you.
after you established your air foundation and your tone, then we're going to add in the fermata. On the note that I'm going to vibrate, I'm going to stop on it and hold it as long as I can and breathe whenever you need to. Remember, this is not a breathing exercise. This is to find your tone with your vibrato. So take all the time that you need to find the vibrato you want in the sound in this phrase. So I will demonstrate. So what I did was I held that long that note longer and vibrated until I found exactly what I wanted. In this instance, I chose a little bit more of a shallow and faster vibrato. After I found what I wanted, I continued the rest of the phrase without vibrato. Because again, the fermata exercise is to focus on that one note along. After I get comfortable with this note and I find exactly the sound I want, I'm going to play it again, but with the shorter fermata length. After you shorten the fermata, eventually you keep shortening it until it's the length of the note in the phrase. Now I will demonstrate the phrase with that one note with vibrato added. So that's the fermata exercise. Ultimately, in the end, whatever notes you decide to vibrate in a phrase, remember it's never permanent. The point of this fermata exercise is again to find the note in the context of the phrase and how you want to vibrate it. It is possible to change the vibrato in subtle ways in the phrase that may not be immediately present to the listener. And, and a, a good example of that would be going back to Saint-Saëns romance at the beginning. So they are already in the phrase, I've changed my vibrato already several times just to communicate different things. It does, if I play it again, I will probably do it differently. But if I want to, I can probably do it exactly the same way as well. And I have learned to do that uh, because sometimes you just want to find the ideal way to play something and then you can just repeat it that way every time. Sometimes that's a good thing to do. Uh, so that's an example right there. Uh, and we can also look at it from the, the point of view of dynamics that maybe that which is louder does not necessarily get more vibrato and that which is softer does not necessarily get less. In fact, in some cases, it could probably be the opposite. And that's an example sort of in the, in the low register. We can carry that through into the, the high octave, middle octave, um, whatever. But um, another aspect that we're talking about here beyond types of vibrato is use of vibrato juxtaposition of different types of vibrato. For example, uh, one thing that we frequently want to do is to mask changes when we're using vibrato. If we're using a more rhetorical vibrato, as in the Saint-Saëns example, what we want to do is try to almost subliminally adjust the vibrato as we're going through in such a way that the it doesn't occur to the listener right away, oh, that vibrato is different than that. We don't necessarily want that to be present. So even when we're talking about a higher level of intensity in general, 
we can still try to smooth over the transition from one type of vibrato to another so it's not quite such a conscious element in the mix as in, in this example. vibrato. Uh, vibrato is a wonderful expressive tool. Never just think of it as something that you switch on and it's, you know, like putting on the, the heating and making a nice comfortable sound. Uh, it's something that is very, very expressive. And the notes that you want to give emphasis to in a phrase, you give the most vibrato to. So... You may have heard in that Shostakovich excerpt. There, I'm just giving a tiny bit of vibrato on that second note. I'm leaning into that. That's the one I want to emphasize. So I'm giving it just a little magic dust of vibrato. And then the next phrase is one that I want to say a little bit more. So I'm going to just use that vibrato a little bit more on the second note in this answer. But then on the resolution, both times you take it away. So just to help you join the dots, as I'm playing that little excerpt from Shostakovich 5, uh, to relate it to what we've been talking about, I'm using my vibrato very subtly in order to show the point of emphasis in each little phrase there. So you'll hear in this first phrase very gentle vibrato on the second note and then as I, because I want to give that one some emphasis, lean into that a little bit so it has that yearning quality, that very human quality. So I'm using my technique to create this human storytelling. Um, so you'll hear gentle vibrato very subtly on the second note, and then as I resolve, I take away the vibrato too, so that it's, so that the shape of my phrase, the de-emphasis, the emphasis, the de-emphasis, is clear, not just with the breath, but also with how I'm using the vibrato. And then in the second little answering part of the phrase, I'm going to lean in, use a little bit more vibrato on the second note this time. Um, just to give it more of a pleading quality. So it's not the same. You never step into the same river twice in your music. So you're developing there. And so these are just ways to show the emphasis, de-emphasis, with the breath, with the control of the dynamic, and also with your vibrato, as well as your vowel sound, so your tone of voice. So I'm using the ooh vowel sound. So I want, you, I want to encourage you to think about all of these different ways you can be artistic. You can be an artist of the breath. Uh, how, what kind of consonant you're using, what kind of vowel sound you're using, uh, what is your tone of voice, what kind of vibrato are you using. So with vibrato, you have the different amplitude of vibrato. So that was quite a shimmery one, not a big amplitude. Um, ending the appropriate tone of voice. All of this is to do with tone of voice. So uh, you want to be able to vary the vibrato speed, maybe to a little shimmer.
or at the end of too long uh, sonata. Like just like moonlight on the water. Other times you need something that has more energy. So think of vibrato as energy in the sound, not something technical. Think of it as energy in the sound. When do I want more energy in the sound? Um, so there I need I need the way I release the air we release the vibrato something dynamic and spinning uh, not too hysterical but flowing nonetheless maybe the slow movement Just peaceful vibrato. So I don't want to be too. <laughs> Sounds awful. Um, anyway, just just be aware of your vibrato speed, um, and and also use that artistically as a tool to help your expression. <laughs> 